Hello everybody, so today I want to quickly look at the bounding box and just basically explain what it is. Um, so a bounding box is just basically the size of a box that will go around your piece of geometry to all its limits, its maximum and min minimum limits in the X, the Y and the Z space. Let's have, take a look at that. So. I want to use a bit of maybe test geometry and if you go down here you can see this test geometry which there's a pig head for example um, there's also let me pick another one um, there's a let's have a look at Tommy <laughs> there you go Tommy come on there we are there's Tommy and you can play around with these a little bit I can remove his clothes I can remove the textures, I can change the resolution of this. Uh, so there's a number of things I can do with these test geometries and they're really just used so that you can test whatever animations or, um, or maybe uh, simulations that you're doing, right? So they're pretty useful. Uh, so let's take, oh, before I continue, before I go on to the next thing, I wanna show you that some of them are also animated. So this crag one here, uh, I can see if I run my timeline, oops, let's go back to one, all right, all the way back here, and I can see that this one here is animated. All right, pretty cool, right? So you can use that too for various effects that you're making uh, and save you having to kind of create or download an animation from somewhere else. So I kind of like these. Anyway, I'm going to remove all of them and I'm actually going to use a one called the uh, toy, wherever that is, rubber toy, there we go. Why? I just kind of like this one. Alright, so there's my rubber toy and I want to know what the bounding of this is, what the limits are of it. I can actually do this by going to my information here and I can see here the minimum position and the maximum position and the overall size of it and this is where the the center of it is okay so in this case if I look into let's get it into the where are we we're in red here okay so here is the Z so this point here will be the minimum this point here will be the maximum and I can also check this visually by simply adding a box node so if I add a box node and this box will be the exact same size as the shape inside of it. And I can check this by, uh, let's just put this onto the template and go back to this. There we go. All right, now, we, now we're doing well. So I can see here that these are the limits here. All right. Um, if I want to look at the top, I can see maybe a bit better that those limits are in place. Okay, all around it. Uh, the limits are there too. Okay, I'm just hitting the one, two, three, and four buttons here so I can check this out. All right, and go back to hit number one on your keyboard back in the perspective mode. And to double check that this is absolutely correct, let me open this information here. And I'm going to, oops, I always have a problem trying to get this to work. There we go. All right, so this is now locked this in. So I can see my minimum maximum positions here in X, in Y, and also in Z. And if I open my box, I can see that these should be exactly the same. Let me move that, all right. And you can see that they are, all right. The minimum, the maximum, they're exactly the same on both sides. So there's my bounding box, cool. Uh, there's another way that I can create a bounding box too, and I can use something called a bound node. This is a little bit more advanced, so if you need something other than a box to create that bound, you can use this. Let me do the same thing, all right. Um, but I can also change my type so I can have a sphere, which will exactly bound around it. And there's also a rectangle if you just need to have this in a uh, in just a flat plane. Uh, but in this case, uh, the bounding box kind of gives it away. I want it to be a box. Um, okay, now to give you uh, another idea of how this bind bounding box can change, I'm just going to create my sphere. Okay, 
I'm going to create a box again and let's have the sphere let's put the box on let's add that there we go cool and now I can see that I've got this bounding box around the sphere however if I change the size of this I also change the size of my bounding box and it will automatically update of course and here this information oops and again my little okay maybe I'll try with the trackball see if I can get it to click on it there we go that's better um, so if I check there and I check the next one there we go again you can see that these numbers match uh, minimum is minus 1, maximum is 1.1 and the overall size is 2.2 so uh, they will always match. It's important to have these bounding boxes and to understand even what they are because you will use them in various things that you're doing in the future but for now I just want to explain what a bounding box is and how you can visualize it. So I hope that was useful. You guys be great and have a great day. Bye-bye.